Hello, how are we doing? This is my voice. I am not here. I am actually in Portugal. So I apologise profusely that I can't give you some insightful things that have happened to me throughout the day. I'll tell you all about it though when I get back on Sunday. We now present another episode in a radio series based on the world famous BBC comedy success, Steptoe and Son. With Wilfred Bramble as Albert. He'll never make a good rag and bow man. He ain't got no sense of mission. Sitting there all day on my air cushion like the Lord Mayor's coachman. Yeah. If Hercules didn't know his way home, I'd never see him. One of these days, I'll take the card out myself and show him what a real professional can do. And with Harry H. Corbett as Harold. Here I go. Here I go. I'll smooth my throat. What a part in the ways it has got to come. One good, clean strike of a sword. Swift and sure, no regrets. I've got to spread my wings and take off. And even Atlas couldn't carry the world on his shoulders forever. And I'm not going to carry that old ferret on my shoulders any longer. If I don't cut that knot with the old Damocles sword and fly away like old Icarus. I might as well put me head in the perishing gas, I'm not done. This week, the diploma. Oh, this is it, is it? Yeah. Eight hours totting and this is it. Yeah, we get rich on this, won't we? Well, that's not my fault. Well, it's not my fault, is it? You're the one that goes out. Yeah, I know it's not your fault. I didn't mean that. I mean, it's not my fault if there ain't the stuff about. I mean, I've been out. I've tried. Oh, we might as well not bother at this rate. We might as well turn it in and get a job. Oh, as where am I inquire, would you find a job? Yeah. Let's get this rubbish off the cart and put it out of sight. How much do you think we're going to get for this lot? Now look, if you want a row, let's have one here and now Because I'm in the mood for it, I'll tell you Don't think I enjoy flogging my guts out all day long for a saucepan and a couple of yards of pipe eh, Flogging your guts out Sitting in a cave all day, more like Drinking tea with your mates Putting tanners in the machines, that's what you've been doing oh, Is that what you think I've been doing? Stuck in a calf? Is that what you think? Now, I'll ask you a simple question has it been raining today, or hasn't it? Yeah, of course it's been raining. Right, fill my cup then. Go on, feel it. <laughs> it's wet. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. It's wet. So is my shirt, so is my vest, and so am I. Wet, wet. How do you think I got wet, eh? Well, you've probably been out in the rain. That is right. <laughs> I have been out in the rain. I've been out in that blasted rain all day long. I've been in the cafe for half an hour to have me dinner. That's when it stopped raining. It stopped when I went in. And it started again when I come out. <laughs> 198 roads I've been down today. 198. Bawling me lungs out, ringing the bell, shouting the odds. I can't do no more, Dad. Look, if they don't want to give me their rags, I can't force them. What do you want me to do? Break the doors down and tear the clothes off of them? Well, you must be going wrong somewhere. I mean, it's getting worse. Every day you come back with less than the day before. Well, you can't go on like this. It's you. They don't like the look of you. They're frightened to open the door to you. <laughs> Young married women around here, in the house all alone. <laughs> They're not going to open the doors to a scrap like you. All this violence going about now. You want to have a shave more often, smarten yourself up. Yes, all right then. I'll put a top hat on if you like, and a monocle, and a nice pair of white gloves. How's that? You think they'll open the door then, do you? Oh, pray, do not be frightened. It is Harold Steptoe. <laughs> the Totting Toff. <laughs> we'll have a little coat of arms on the side of the cart, shall we? By appointment, Reg and Bowman to Her Majesty the Queen. Do you think that'll bring them out? Yeah, don't make excuses. It's you. You don't know your trade. If you did, you'd bring home more than this. What's the use of a pot with holes in it? Now, kick it over the wall. 
That is aluminium, that is. Look, if this was the war, they'd be glad of that. They'd make a V-bomber out of that. <laughs> Oh, very funny. You're all in here with an empty cart and expect me to laugh. Well, I don't think it's funny. <laughs> well, I think it's funny. <laughs> oh, look at us. Have a good look at us. It's pathetic. <laughs> Trying to scratch a living off other people's rubbish. We're like a couple of fleas around a dustbin, we are. There's a good living to be made out of other people's rubbish if you go the right way about it. It's you. You ain't never seen me come in without a full cart. Well, I ain't never seen you go out with a cart yet. <laughs> Look, Dad, Dad, why don't you face up to the facts? This is a dying trade. What are you talking about? I tell you, it's a dying trade. You see, Dad, what you don't realise is that the future of the rag and bone business is dependent on the overall condition of the economy of the country as a whole. I You <laughs> didn't realise that, did you? I mean, you don't read the Financial Times, do you? What's that got to do with it? Well, you've got to know what it's all about, Dad. You've got to keep abreast of current events. You don't know what's going on in the world, do you? Who don't? You don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. What do you know about the common market? Well, um, well it ain't round here. <laughs> I know all the markets around here. It's nowhere near here, I can tell you that. <laughs> oh, you ignorant old man. Oh, it makes you want to weep straight, it does It's in the papers every day. Look, they might want to ask you to vote as whether we join or not. What's the good of them asking you? And you think it's a row of stalls up an alleyway somewhere. Well, what is it then, if you're so clever? I'll tell you what it is. The common market is Europe. All getting together and flogging things to each other. I'd do that now. That bloke with the onions comes round every week. Oh, that... <laughs> Yeah, but this is different. You mark my words. The common market is going to make a big difference to the totting business. How? Well, they can come and go as they like. You write till they build this tunnel under the channel. That's what you've got to worry about. All them foreign rag and bone men, a great queue of horses and carts stretching under the channel, <laughs> pouring out at Dover, stripping the country of its junk. I thought you said there was no junk about. Yeah, well, there ain't much. But what there is should be kept for us. British junk for the British, that's what I say. Ah, oh, it might be a good thing at that. If they come over here, we can go over there. Go over there? With that rotten horse we got? You're joking. He's just about knackered by the time we get to the gate. <laughs> oh, mate, we're in the wrong business. Oh, this game's just about played out. Oh, there's no future in it for a small firm like us. All the trouble we go to for a few quid, I could earn more in a factory. This firm was started by my dad in 1894, and he worked it till the day he died, and I'm going to work it till the day I die. Well, you can work it as far as I'm concerned, Neddy. <laughs> Look, I've got to get a wash and change. I've been working, if you ain't. Look, son, things will get better. It's only a temporary slump. Oh, wait till the spring cleaning season starts. There'll be a load of junk slung out. We always do well at the spring cleaning. Oh, Dad, wake up. Things ain't going to get no better. It's finished. It's like that bloke on the telly said. The bloke with the big ears. He said, when we go into the common market, it'll be the big firms that'll prosper, and the little firms will go to the wall. That's what he said. Little firms. And you can't get any littler than us. <laughs> I think I ought to tell you, Dad. I'm handing in my notice. You can't hand in your notice. You're on the board of directors. <laughs> well, why then I'm resigning. I don't care what you call it. I'm giving a month's notice that I'll give you time to flog this lot or get someone in to take my place. Now, leave me alone, please. I've got some work to do. What have you got there? A book. Where'd you get it? I bought it. Oh, what do you want to go and buy a book for? You've got lots of books. I wanted this one. I ain't got this one, have I? Well, what do you want it for? I want to read it. Oh, yeah, I ain't read the others yet. Why don't you read them first? Because I want to know what is in this book, not what is in the other books. Oh. Uh, well, what do you want to know, then? What's so special about that book that you ain't got in the other books? Look, go on, look for yourself. Don't keep asking me questions. Have a look for yourself. Yeah, yeah wait a minute. Uh, I'll have to get me glasses. Hand me my box of specs. Oh, God. <laughs> there you are. Now, 
these won't do. Let's try these. <laughs> you don't half look funny through these. <laughs> Spectacles are not supposed to make people look funny through, Dad. <coughs> but why don't you get a pair of glasses of your own? Oh, these is all right. How can they be all right? They was made for somebody else. I can see good with these. Look, all eyes is different. You could see better if you had a pair of your own. No, no, whoever had these made had the same trouble as I've got. I mean, everybody would think there weren't no National Health Service. Wearing somebody else's glasses, it's bad for you. That's why they brought out the National Health Service. To stop that happening to poor old men like you. Ah, you wouldn't get a pair of glasses like these. Look at the frames. Real torches is your shell. <laughs> Made for a toff, these were. My dad picked these up in 1923. Called it a big house. Big toff's house. In Epsom it was. He just died. So my dad knocked on this door and he said, Got any junk? And the woman, all in black she was, she says, Come in. And there he was, large as life, sitting up in bed. Dead. Ooh. <laughs> all sitting round boozing, all the relations. Irish, I think they were. Uh, well, um, anyway, they gave him a drink. So he said, uh, what about his clothes? That's a nice suit he's got on. They said, you can have his glasses, you won't need them. So he whipped them off his face, gave him half a dollar, had another drink and left. <laughs> Funny story, isn't it? <laughs> it used to be. <laughs> I don't know how you can wear them knowing where they come from. How can you wear them? What do you mean? They're a lovely pair of glasses, they are. Look at them frames. They don't make frames like these these days. Look, it don't matter about the frames, Dad. It's the bits of glass. That's what you look through. It don't make your eyes go worse, David. Well, I've got all them others. I'll use them if they do. Here's a strong pair. Look at them. Look at them. Look how lovely and thick the glass is on them. Look. You can hardly see through them. <laughs> I mean, Andy, they will when my eyes go a bit more. Oh, oh well, go on and ruin your eyes. I don't care. I can see all right if I hold the book close. Where are you going with my book? Uh, there, there's more light by the window. Oh, well, why not be truthful, Dad? You can't read a word of it through them glasses. So, you... Uh, so, you... Ah, uh, uh, what did you say? So, you want to be a television engineer. Oh, me? <laughs> that is that title. Oh, yeah, yeah. What are you reading this for, then? Because I want to be a television engineer. Why? There's nothing wrong with our set. It's not for our set. I'm going to take it up. That's going to be my profession. You, a television engineer, you can't even turn the channels over. But that's why I'm reading this. I shall read this, and by the time I've finished it, I'll be ready to take my exams. See? Then I'll be skilled. I'll have a diploma. What do you want a diploma for? Well, the first thing they asked you is, have you got a diploma? And if you ain't got one, well, you might as well save your bus fare. Because they ain't going to let you in without a diploma, are they? I mean, it stands to reason. It's we skilled men who'll get all the plum jobs. Oh, yes. It's us men with the letters after our names they'll be after. I mean, there's a shortage of us blokes. You ain't got no letters after your name. You ain't even passed yet. You ain't even read the book. Oh, well, it don't take me long to get through a book, does it? I mean, you know, but I mean, how long did it take me to read them my grey books? Two days? Well, there you are, then. Yeah, it'll take longer than two days to read that. It's harder than my grey. It's got diagrams and, and figures and stuff. Oh, no, that. That's why I've given you a month's notice. I'm allowing myself a bit of time. So two weeks to read it, a week to pass me exams, and then a week to learn how to drive. What's driving got to do with it? Well, I've got to learn to drive the van, haven't I? And I can't be a television repairman without knowing how to drive, can I? See, television repairmen don't go around in horses and carts, do they? <laughs> they just wouldn't look right. Horses and carts and electronics, they just don't go together. And uh, how much is this diploma going to cost you? Only 80 quid. 80 quid? <laughs> You're being done, it's a take-on. Haven't you got an horrible, suspicious little mind? See, they're not all like you, you know. When I mean, there are some genuine people knocking about. Look at this bloke, the author. Look at the letters after his name. Jack Springfield. B-S-E-E, F-R-C-E-E, E-R-E, L-S-C-T-V. What do all they stand for? I don't know. 
exactly. You don't know. He runs a school. He could have given himself all those. Anybody can put letters after his name. I, I could call myself Albert Stepto RBM. RBM? Rag and bone man. <laughs> Look, Peter, I am not interested in your small minded suspicions. I've made up my mind. I'm not suffocating in here anymore. I'm getting out. I'm going to spread my wings. I'm going to build a future for myself. Yeah. And this is my passport. I can go anywhere when I get my diploma, mate. Anywhere. America, Europe, China. They're crying out for men with diplomas, they are. This, you see, Dad, we are the new elite. Skilled men. Oh, you can't stop progress, Dad. You've either got to go with it or be left behind. Now, if you don't mind... Ah, uh, what about me? Who's going to help me run this business? Oh, I'll keep an eye open for you. I mean, there's plenty of unskilled labour knocking about. There's plenty of junk knocking about, but you can't find it. Oh, God, I wish I had a study. Now, let's see. The anode voltage on the first stage condenser depends on... One saucepan with one holes in One saucepan it. with... <laughs> and some lead piping. Shut up! There's no point in wearing the old out for that. You might as well go around with a carrier bag. Yes, Dad. <laughs> Do you know how much money we took last week? No, Dad. Do you know how much it costs to run this business? Yes, Dad. And you bring on one saucepan <laughs> and some lead piping. Oh, for God's sake, Dad, I'm trying to concentrate on thermodynamics. I've read the same sentence six times. Now, have you finished? I mean, can I read my book? Have you got anything else to say? Can I carry on? Don't let me disturb you. I'm going to bed. I've got to be up early in the morning. Somebody's got to work around here. Television engineer. Peter, kindly do not breathe down my neck. It's very distracting. Hey, you're on page 20. You only just sat down. You ain't read 20 pages while you sat there. I didn't say I had. Well, where have you been reading it then? Oh, I know what you've been doing. You've been reading it on the round. You ain't been looking. That's why you brought nothing back. I don't have to look. The horse knows the way. He can't shout, can he? <laughs> Look, I'll shout it. There just ain't no junk about it. I'll show you there's junk about it. I'll show you tomorrow. I'll show you how to collect junk. Oh, what? You go out tomorrow. Go on. Go out and make a fortune. See how things have changed. You ain't been out since 1945. I'll show you how to top, mate. I should have gone out years ago instead of letting you ruin the business. But oh no, I thought, give him a chance, I thought. He's got to learn the trade. And now you've ruined it. You're going to leave it. I'll show you how to run a business. And I won't need no diplomas. Good luck there. Got a bed. Ooh, me shin, me shin. Oh, I told you to take those glasses off. Oh, oh. <laughs> Silly old switch. Now, the anode's voltage on the first stage condenser would be... Ooh, soof. Don't have to try your eyes, this small print. Ooh. Hey, I wonder if a pair of those specs would fit me. Ah. is it? Just one vase. Mind you, it's a nice little vase. Still, better not leave it here in case Marconi comes out. <laughs> now take the EHT transformer with the free far margin of error which should slide into the... Ah! Good in. Get in. Get in. Oh, for God's sake, where's the hammer? <laughs> God, blimey. I suppose this must be the right blueprint. Oh, yes. Well, uh, well, we'd better solder that on. Now, make sure that the soldering iron is plugged into the light socket properly. Yes, that's it. Right, let's get down to it, then. <clears throat> I don't... Ah, uh, 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 uh. oh, I missed it. Oh, that's ridiculous. How the hell can you hold the iron, the solder and the wires all at one go? Plum, you need three hands. 
That's going to be man against machine, is it? All right, then. You... You're not going to beat me, mate. It's got to be brains that wins in the end. Yes, well, I'll do that later. Now, this valve must fit somewhere. Get him, go on, get, get... Just a minute. One, two, three, four, five holes on the chassis. One, two, three, four, five prongs on the valve. Five prongs and five holes. Well, what do you want to go in, then? <laughs> get in. <laughs> Would you get in, will you? Hello, son. Oh. Oh, it's you. Oh, hello, Dad. How's it going? Oh, it's yes, a piece of cake, really. I mean, it's no bother. <laughs> I just a question of knowing what you're doing. That is all. Uh, you reckon it'll work, then? What? This? Oh, yes, this will work all right. It's, um, coming easier to you, then, is it, uh, this television laugh? Oh, yeah, well, there's nothing to it. It's like I said, it's knowing what you are doing. It's common sense, really. Yeah, let's have a look at that blueprint. Hmm. Looks complicated, don't it? Yes, well, it would, wouldn't it, to a layman. But when you know what you are doing, well, it's just like reading a book. Uh, what's this uh, on the drawing, then? What's what where? Where my finger is. That. So? Oh, that. Yes. That'll be the, uh, that'll be the condenser. I know that's what it says, but what's it for? Well, the condenser. Well, it, uh, it condenses. <laughs> I mean, you know what condense means. You know, it, it makes things smaller. It makes the picture smaller. Otherwise, it'd be too big for the screen, you see. I mean, it's no good having a 24-inch picture if you've only got a 21-inch screen, is it? I mean, all their heads and feet would be cut off. I see. Yeah, so it's just a question of knowing what you are doing. How do you get on? Uh, who? Uh, me? Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, on the car? Yeah. Must have been a bit strange for you after all these years. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah it was. So how did you get on, then? Oh, uh, all right. Uh, not bad, really. Did you collect much? What, um... Uh, Junk? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, qu quite a lot, really. Oh, good. Well, let's go and have a look at yeah, it. Yeah, I've unloaded it. Oh, you shouldn't have unloaded it all by yourself. Well, uh, I knew you was busy. Uh, I called, but you didn't hear me. What'd you get, then? Oh, well, uh, you know, uh, usual sort of stuff. Odds and ends, and a bit of this, and a bit of that. <laughs> oh, there's plenty of junk about there. Yeah, there was today. You just have to know where to look for it. Keep your eyes open, you know. Oh, well, I'm glad you did well. Well, that's all right then, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, you're doing all right on the old telly, love. Oh, yeah. It's just going like a bomb, this is. Oh, this is definitely my vocation, this is. Oh, yes. I mean, it's just like I've been doing it all of my life. I've never done it before, but it's all there. Well, you know how it is. Instinctive, like. Yes, that is it. Instinctive. Comes natural. Like me on the cart. Quite. You was born into it. That is your hammer. This is mine. Horses for courses. It's as simple as that. Oh, it's the only way out. A man has to do what he's best cut out for. Oh, yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, if you're no good at doing a thing, get out. Leave it to somebody who is. We should have done this years ago. Yeah, perhaps you're right. I mean, you're obviously better on the cart than I was. That is your forte, so to speak. And this is mine. Brain work. You know, working with your brains, using the old marbles. That was wasted on the cart, and you was wasted stuck in here. You might say we have both found our niche in life. Yeah, that's true. Well, I suppose I'd better get on with it. Let's have a look. Look, Dad, I wish you wouldn't breathe down the back of my neck. It makes me all fingers and thumbs. Having a bit of trouble, then? No, 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 I'm all right, I'm all right. I just don't like people looking over my shoulder. It puts me off. That valve goes there. And that valve goes there. Do you mind? <laughs> I didn't follow you around the street pointing out all the houses. You don't know what you're doing. Leave it alone before you break something. I was only trying to help. Well, don't. I don't need your help. That's been your bother. You poke your nose into everything I do. Well, keep out of it. I'm the electrician. Go away. Go away and feed the horse. There you are. That's the place for the valve. Fits like a charm. That's where I told you to put it, you great pillock. 
that was a simple bit, that was. I mean, a child of three could have put that in. If you'd have been gawping over my shoulder, I would have seen it. I'll put all this together, not you. Is it finished? Yeah, that's about it. My first one. Not bad, is it? Are you going to turn it on? No. Why not? I don't want to, that's why. You've got to test it, haven't you? See if it works. Well, I don't have to test it. I know that it works. Why? Have you it on, then? No. Well, how do you know that it works, then? Because I've done it right. It must work. I mean, if you do a thing right, it's got to work, hasn't it? I mean, it stands to reason. If you tested it, you'd know for certain whether it works or not. Look, if you know what you are doing, you don't have to test it. I mean, they don't test every bond they make, do they? <laughs> well, they wouldn't have any left if they went and tested them all. Well, that ain't going to explode, is it? Of course it ain't. Well, then turn it on. I think you're frightened to turn it on. I think you're frightened it ain't going to go. No, I ain't frightened. I don't know what you're trying to do. You're trying to undermine my confidence. You want me to turn it on so that if it don't go, you can have a good laugh and destroy my confidence. What do you mean, if it don't go? Well, it might not go. Do you think it'll go or not? Of course it'll go. It's got to go. I've done everything they said. I've read the book. It's got to go. Well, you've got to turn it on sometime, haven't you? Well, I don't have to if I don't want to. That's daft. Every television engineer I've ever heard of tested set when he's mended it. That's what they have test cards for. I can't understand you. All right, all right. I'll turn it on. I'll turn it on. It's not going to work, is it? It must work. It's not going to, is Look, it? Give it a chance. I mean, it's the first time it's ever been switched on. It's not used to it. <laughs> Here, let me have a look at it. Oh, well, no wonder it wouldn't work. You've done it all wrong. Oh, of course. Hey, that don't go there. Uh, and that don't go there either. Here, give me that soldering iron. Oh, now where this will go if you... <laughs> That's better. Ah, this is all right, isn't it? Here, let's have that blueprint again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll see where you went wrong. I thought you said you knew something about it. I do know something about it. This wouldn't be a bad hobby, would it? While I'm waiting at home here for you to come back with the car. Hey, don't cancel that course. I'll take it over. I'll pay you for it. Forty quid. There's no use in wasting it. Ah, shouldn't take me long to get me diploma. That goes there. Go on, break it. I don't That's care. Go on, break it. Interesting, isn't it? I'll have it going in no time. Now, let's try it. <laughs> it ain't going to go, is it? <laughs> BBC One, and now here's the news. Will the human brain one day replace the computer? I'm going to feed the horse. <laughs> Good reception, isn't it? The brightness control could do with a bit of adjusting. Hey, hey, don't go, Harold. Learn how to speak Russian is on soon. You don't want to miss your favourite programme, do you? You big at it, twit. You've been listening to Wilfred Bramble and Harry H. Corbett as Steptoe and Son. Written by Ray Galton and Alan Simpson, adapted for radio by Gail Pedrick, and produced by Bobby J. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the latest episode. I will not be here tomorrow night, but an episode will be. I'm in Portugal, as I keep reminding everybody, because I'm going to love the fact that I'm there, um, enjoying some sunshine and some drinks with friends, etc. So I hope you're having a good time, whatever you are doing. But there will be another episode of one of your favourite podcast, Old Time Radio shows tomorrow night. Don't forget, you can check out my podcast page at patreon.com forward slash foxy geek girl. I'll be back on Sunday, but I will leave you with some episodes to enjoy over the next couple of nights anyway. So don't forget to tune in at 6pm GMT anyway. Stay safe. Always be kind. Love you all.